Yeah, I think we're, everybody's ready. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Mark, here's the mic. Thank you. Um, hello, Mark. Uh, I don't really have anything like a PhD or any certification. Uh, I think I said last night after Humanoids that I'm mostly educated through uh, practice and YouTube videos. Um, and, you know, before I get started, I think I rap. I need, I feel like I need to establish some sort of credibility besides the self-incriminating presentation. <laughs> so, uh, I attempted my first business in sophomore year of high school. Uh, just a group of teenagers that were really into games and wanted to make games. And so that's what we started doing. We tried producing a card game and we're also making a mobile game. But, you know, situations change. Well, what I liked about the, the business is that we actually registered it, like we made it a partnership, and then we went to conventions like PAX South, Corpus Christi Comic Con, Realms Con, and presented our projects there and got attention. It's just that, you know, situations change, people go down different paths, and like my friends just wanted to go to college. And so I uh, kind of was just left wandering, like I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I found uh, Oculus Rift, and I started missing with that, and then um, started going to a bunch of AR VR meetups here, and there aren't that many, but the few that did pop up, I went to, and then at one of those meetups, I met uh, John Frazee of SEO Agency and a startup, uh, and we started working on all those projects, and then uh, situations change again, and uh, we left that startup, and then continued on with SEO agency and to see how augmented reality could be used in marketing, which is pretty much any new emerging technology, like it first flourishes in like games, um, military use, and marketing. And then uh, after messing around a lot with AR and all the platforms available to, to make things with, uh, I ended up making reality devs and I don't know really what it is. <laughs> it's like, well, I've just been doing projects and like, AR is still so early, it's just like, what do you even want to do? For every industry that does exist, there can be one of AR and AI, and then crossover and sub-industries of those industries that pop up. And then, uh, so, when I say there's like a lot of a choice in, in doing, I, what I mean is like, here are all these platforms and companies working towards AR and VR, well, specifically AR. And, well, before I continue, I want to ask, since you're all from... Okay. Um, I want to ask, since you're all, like, have different perspectives and are from different industries, like... Um, so imagine people walking down the street normally wearing head-mounted displays that are compacted or some type of spectacles. And uh, I just want to ask, when do you think that would happen? If you think it's over 10 years from now, like raise your hand. If, okay, over 10 years where people are walking down the street with spectacles, if, if you want to. Do you think it's going to take more than 10 years? Like Google Glass? Well, any type of, it doesn't matter who makes it. It's like before we start seeing people just walking down the street with glasses or head-mounted displays. Yeah, I'd say 10 years. 10 years? More than 10 years. Less than 10 years. How many people think that more than five years? Less than 10 years. You're not getting everybody up economically. You need a little more mm -hmm. like that. All right. Well, I kind of think we're going to be there in the next two to three years. We're going to see the first wave of people yeah. walking down the street wearing these head-mounted displays and spectacles. Yeah. And uh, it's all because these companies are all working towards that. The more they drive a uh, demand in AR, the more the chance of these spectacles popping up. And uh, it's really up in the air on who's going to get there first. Or exactly. not, because, well, even <laughs> there's so, I mean, first, and like it's an actual successful product that everyone actually wants to purchase and continuously purchase. Like, they'll make a choice to purchase a head mounted display over a phone. I, I guess that's what I mean by first, because there's been a lot of attempted AR. Now, uh, 
And this is a reel of what I did last year. And I'm just going to quickly explain, like, these are all applicable right now use cases of, of AR. So the thing that um, got me interested with uh, John is that he was studying a new technique called photogrammetry. And it was where you take a bunch of pictures of anything. It can be an object or a room. And from those pictures, you can generate a model and uh, piece them together. And uh, we started doing around 20, 30. But ideally, you want to take thousands. And uh, this is footage of me taking his photogrammetry or his photos and his photogrammetry models and having to actually be able to walk in it in an HTC Vive. And then, uh, if you notice, the thing that I'm flipping around there is a photogrammetry model of a person that we tried doing. And then, uh, using the basic like image recognition, uh, you can take, like, uh, you can cut, prop out really uh, reflective surfaces and increase the contrast and saturation of images to then get better detail out of uh, what can be recognizable. And so here, my brother's a tattoo artist. And it's just like, why not just bring tattoos to life more? Just recognize tattoos. And uh, potentially like do that for everyone. Uh, this is trying to take the, the image recognition technology and then just recognizing an object in a museum. And then potentially applying it to every other object in there. So you look at it, and then it just gives you extra information on what that thing is and what's relative to it. And then it's just more recognition. And then this is a persistence demo of, so when uh, things like ARKit and ARCore came out, uh, there was, you, when you started a new instance of a, a point cloud session, you, uh, you would start off with entirely new fresh data and it wouldn't stay persistent. Like, um, and so the first thing I try to do is like, if you could keep it to be persistent, and you can, but the thing is, it's, it's recognizing all these things. So as soon as it recognized one thing, it was able to say, oh, since that's there, all these other things are in the exact same place. So if you were to move the chair, it would kind of throw everything off, the persistence angles. And then this is uh, taking photogrammetry and applying it to, to real estate, where uh, I think we, we took a drone and we uh, tried to create a model of all just flying that around. We didn't do indoors, but we, uh, I think we got a pretty cool thing to walk through. And the idea is just people walk through homes, houses before they have the intention of visiting them or uh, buying them. And then uh, this is taking Macbox and OpenStreetMap data and then using it to navigate to a park across the street or anything else really that you would want it to. And then this is taking uh, like recognizing objects and then giving you a little manual for them on how to use them. Uh, this is a computer vision demo where it's recognizing the sides of a Rubik's Cube and still taking the idea of like remote maintenance and manuals and then it shows you how to solve the cube. That is cool. <laughs> you, know, you really can solve those things? You mean it's possible? Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's <laughs> like uh, these little things that show you. Oh, you're ready to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like, uh, there's like little websites that uh, you kind of just give your colors on the cube, and then it tells you how to solve it. So really, it only needs like four sides to to be recognized, and then it can give you spit out a solution. Um, uh, this is another taking uh, museums and uh, public spaces. Uh, this is uh, someone I'm working with uh, named Nava, who uh, 
is doing something called Latino Tunes, and he uh, is, was putting together an exhibit in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and he just asked if I could help him recognize his exhibits or galleries, and, um, and that's what I tried doing. Um, I put all of his, uh, pull up all the assets that he gave me that he wanted to be able to recognize, and people can go up to them and, and see interaction or a new experience. And uh, that, on the right side, is a uh, like whole wall, 20 foot wide uh, image that when you look at it, it gives you a different interaction or experience. And then uh, this is just taking a, a chroma key shader and putting someone in front of a green screen and then having a little AR hologram for people to guide you around a building or something. <laughs> I like that. And then uh, one something really cool because uh, since I started doing HoloLens, I, I saw this, and the, the same thing can really be applied to AR Kit and AR Four, but it's just it's using the the spatial uh, recognition and environment planning to then from the Hololens to then generate an AutoCAD file from uh, what you're just looking at. And um, it's really slick. And it, you know, as soon as you're done with the, the CAD generation, it just emails it to you in a zip. So why I think those head-mounted displays and spectacles will be coming in two to three years is like, if you think in the perspective of 2017, we started out with a $5,000 experimental uh, enterprise headset for Microsoft, and now we're at AR Core and AR Kit in, in the span of one year. And the, the functionalities of, or of HoloLens was, is just coming to the next generation of phones, and it's only going to get smaller and smaller than that. And then I just want to show you what I'm cooking up in Unity. So, um, for a while, I've been trying to do more uh, multi-user tool uh, in the same instance of people using a, uh, a session of AR. I'm not really entirely sure what the, the goal is. So I just wanted to be able to place the same objects in the same area and see them update at the same time. And so what I tried doing was like a like a, sub, a little solution with like MongoDB and PHP and like I, as I was doing that, I, I felt like I was trying to reinvent the wheel because a lot of uh, what I wasn't aware of, like a good amount of solutions already exist and then I found uh, Google Firebase. And, um, it, and I don't have to spend the time to spin up a server, I just get a database um, and hosting and functions and authentication and I just ping it Two and back, and then that, that's it. And so, if you can see the, the object out of here, and then I start the session. Gosh. <coughs> it picked up the objects that are already existing in the database. And so if I, I kind of hotkeyed it already to just press spacebar and then oh, and generate new objects. And then uh, it, Firebase is really fast, so when I click back in the window, the objects are there. And I can retrieve them and remove them as, like, as fast as I want and however much the, 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 the free account lasts, basically. And you get a lot for, for free. And then this is still more me experimenting with uh, shaders and uh, mainly AR core, and it's just a little neat portal. And uh, the reason why I uh, started really looking into marketing is because me and John would start using these, these little virtual showrooms to start selling clients on uh, that they, sh they should take on our services. Instead of just like this little 
fun, colorful room, we would provide statistics and uh, data visualization relevant to them. And then the newer version. And the newer versions of AR4 and ARKit are now able to detect. I get rid of this. Drag it away. Oh. Uh, you're able to detect uh, walls and ceilings. And so I'll take the portal ID again and then just wanted to, uh, playing games like Portal before, I wanted to be able to play Portal in my environment and uh, use the environment to solve puzzles in some way. The newest headsets coming out are really cool. Uh, so, uh, Leap Motion and uh, I think it's Amp VR making. Well, Leap Motion made an open source $100 AR headset that would just hand track. And, like, so since it's open source, it's just like, what else do you want to add on top of it? Um, you can take Leap Motion, it's just like a thread. Uh, sensor, and you can attach it to a phone, you can attach it to an HTC Vive, you can attach it to literally whatever uh, existing head mounted display. So this tech is just getting really cool and just a lot better and better, especially with occlusion. That's the main problem that takes people out of an experience is that the, you, when you put your hand in front of something, like it's not actually, you know, detected. And what I, what, I, what keeps me up at night, and what I, what I keep wanting to do is having this a, a citywide AR network or cloud. And not really maybe citywide, but a collection of interconnected ex AR experiences across the city, like every museum or public space. And using things like Firebase to be able to handle all that data. And what's cool about it is that I, like, the more users that are dumped on, it handles that load by itself and distributes it and charts it. And, uh, the people leading in AR right now are not like the three giants that exist. Um, it's third party companies that are taking things like AR Core and AR Kit and actually putting them to use. People like Mono Motion, which uh, instead of using an infrared laser, it's just using the camera feed to pick up hand detection. Uh, Escher Reality, which is just uh, cross device AR, like the same deal of uh, being in a session, like. Both those companies and others are being bought out by Google and Apple, and uh, that, I think that's kind of the common practice of new emerging technologies: is that the new companies are the third-party companies are the one making all the innovations and then getting bought and then uh, continuing on. Thank you.